All right, here are solutions to perfect problem three from Math 112. Um, basic idea here is we want to prove that this point, point labeled A here, um, who is a distance around the circumference of the circle of pi over six from our starting spot here at one zero, um, is equal to root three over two comma one half. These are cosine and sine of pi over six is the term we'll use later on in the class. Um, and the way we'll do that, we'll use a few facts First of all, every point on this unit circle satisfies this equation. That just comes from the general equation of a circle by changing the center to 0, 0, and the radius to 1. Um, and then we'll use this distance formula here, which comes from the Pythagorean theorem. Um, and the way we'll do it is we'll kind of follow all these steps here. So I'll just go through them one at a time. Step 1. So step 1 wants me to argue why it's true that if this point is x, y, this point has got to be x, negative y. Um, and I guess what I would say is notice that point C is pi over 6, what is that, clockwise from 1, 0. All right, usually think about this point as 11 pi over 6 counterclockwise because we always travel counterclockwise. Um, but you could also say it's pi over 6 clockwise, because all the way around is 2 pi. So if 11 pi over 6 gets you here, an additional pi over 6 would get you here. So C is pi over 6 clockwise from 1, 0, while A is pi over 6 counterclockwise from 1, 0. So if it's the same distance around the outside, uh, we can kind of, so we can use so because a circle is symmetric, um, C must be equal, it must have the same X coordinate, Jeez. must have the same X coordinate as A but the negative of the y-coordinate. Um, some argument similar to that. I don't really care how you argue it, but as long as you get to that conclusion. Step two. Step two says, argue that the distance from A to C is the same as the distance from A to B. This distance right here is the same as this distance right here. Um, and the hint it says is, use the distance around the outside of the circle again. So consider the distance maybe around the circumference of the circle. Circumference. Uh, from A to C, that distance is, well, let's see, from A to this point we know is pi over 6. And we just talked about from this point to this point is pi over 6. So it's two of these pi over 6's, pi over 6 plus pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 6, a.k.a. pi over 3. Um, and from A to B, so let's see what we got there. Here's A, here's B. Well, we know that B is pi over 2 from here. But we don't have to go the entire pi over 2 because we want to subtract out this pi over 6. We're only going from here to here, not from here to here. So since this is pi over 6, the distance from here to here must be pi over 2 minus pi over 6. A to B is pi over 2 minus pi over 6. See, this is 3 pi over 6 minus pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 6, a.k.a. pi over 3. So they have the same distance around the circumference, therefore they have the same distance. Same distance around the circumference, therefore those distances are all equal. Or some similar argument. Step three. Um, use the distance formula to express the distances from A to C and from A to B. So using the distance formula, which we have given here, we could say the distance from A to C is equal to the square root of, uh, let's see, it's the difference in the x values. 
but they're both x. So in this case, it would just be x minus x squared plus the difference in the y values. See, I got y here and negative y here. So I want y minus negative y. Maybe I'll say something like that squared. And the distance from, what's the other one, a to b. Follow the same format. We want the difference in the x values. See, the x value here is x. The x value here is 0. So it would just be x minus 0. And then the difference in the y values. Let's see, this is y minus 1. y minus 1 squared. So here's the distance from a to c. Here's the distance from a to b. Um, I guess we're done with step 3. Step 4. Set those distances equal to each other because we already figured out that they're equidistant. The distances are the same from step two. Okay, that's easy enough. The square root of, let's see, x minus x, I'm going to simplify it. x minus x is zero. Zero squared is just zero. Um, y minus negative y is 2y. So what I get is that the square root of 2y squared must be the same as the square root of x minus 0 is just x squared plus y minus 1 squared. So step 4, I get this. Or I guess I could even go a step further, square both sides, and say that 2y squared is the same as x squared plus y minus 1 squared. So I took it an extra step. You can do this step now or you can do it later. It doesn't matter. Step five. Step five, use the first useful fact. Use this thing that x squared plus y squared equals one. So I want to use x squared plus y squared equals one to rewrite this thing, but only using the variable y. In other words, I want to substitute for x. So I know that x squared plus y squared equals one so therefore, x squared is equal to 1 minus y squared if I subtract y squared from both sides of this equation. So this equation that I had right here, 2y squared is equal to, instead of x squared, I could write 1 minus y squared. So I copied what I have in black here down here in red. Except instead of x squared, I wrote 1 minus y squared because I just figured out that x squared was 1 minus y squared. And finally, last step, step 6. Uh, it says solve this mess. So we get 2y squared equals 1 minus y squared plus y minus 1 squared. So let's see, 2y squared is the same as 4y squared. Uh, y plus y minus 1 squared. If I foil that out, I get y squared minus 2y plus 1. Uh, so I could collect like terms. Let's see, I get minus 2y over here, and 1 and 1 is 2. And the y squareds cancel out. So I get 4y squared plus 2y minus 2 equals 0. Or if I wanted, I could divide by 2 and get 2y squared plus y minus 1 equals 0. And so now i got to solve this thing for y. need a little bit more room to do that. Um, there's a couple of different ways to do this. Um, let's see, the way I've been showing people how to do it is we want to factor this. So find two numbers that multiply to whatever a times c is, negative 2 in this case, and add to positive 1. So multiply to negative 2, add to positive 1. It sounds like positive 2 and negative 1. So then replace 2y with t positive 2y, negative 1y. In other words, what I'm saying is, right, this is 2y squared plus 2y minus y minus 1 equals 0. Because from this form, you can factor by grouping. Pull out a 2y from the first two terms, and you're left with the y plus 1. And then figure out what you can pull out from the next two terms so that you'll be left with y plus 1. In this case, it's a negative 1. So now you got two terms that both have a y plus 1 in them. So you can pull that out. 
and you get to here. So what we get is that y plus 1 equals 0, or y equals negative 1, or 2y minus 1 equals 0, y equals positive 1 half. Um, so what I'm saying is this value of y can only be positive 1 half or negative 1. It's not negative 1, because negative 1's down here, so it must be positive 1 half. So maybe I write not the solution. So therefore I get that y equals 1 half. And once I know that y equals 1 half, I can solve for x by plugging back into one of my original equations. This one's probably the easiest. I know that x squared plus y squared. Try that again. From here I'm going up here x squared plus y squared equals 1, so x squared plus 1 quarter, 1 half squared, I'll write it all out, so x squared plus 1 quarter equals 1, x squared equals 3 quarters, x equals plus or minus the square root of 3 quarters, which is root 3 divided by 2, um, let me write that better. Yeah, okay, I'll leave it like that. Plus or minus the square root of 3 quarters. So I get that x equals negative root 3 divided by 2, or x equals positive root 3 over 2. But if you go back up to your picture here, we can see that our x value has to be positive because it's up here in quadrant 1. So what we can say is this is not the solution. So our answer is that x equals root 3 over 2. And wow, we are finally done with this problem.